Round two between two of the top teams in the country. Satisfied is mine. Hold up, let me get up in it now. I'm here to win it now. I get up. Two of the best square off in this blockbuster rematch. Number two Duke's freshman sensations are looking for a statement sweep on the road. Zion in traffic. I feel lucky to be at these kids. They could play every possession at a high level. But the number three Cavaliers are ready to even the score and defend home court. To beat a team like Duke, you've got to be at an A or A minus. Know who you are. Don't get away from that. So get up for number two Duke versus number three Virginia. This is a sonic blockbuster on ESPN. And what a scene here at John Paul Jones Arena in Charlottesville. Duke and Virginia meeting again with so much on the line and nationally and within the ACC. As we check out the ACC standings, North Carolina needed overtime today to win at home against Miami. So the winner of this game will move into a tie with the heels for top spot. Louisville currently leading Florida State late in that game so they could go to nine and two hi everybody and welcome to charlottesville dan shulman and jay billis there are a lot of great environments in the country this one is right up there with the best of them and with duke in town it's an even louder building right now and if this game is as good as the first one was we're all going to have a good couple of hours well the first one was an excellent game 72 70 a little bit of a surprise that both teams reached 70 points but you saw zion williamson and rj barrett combined for 57 points both teams shot over 50 percent duke shot 62 percent in the second half and that was without Trey Jones in the lineup and Trey Jones the freshman point guard from Minnesota is a vital part of what Duke does both on offense and defense he's really the heartbeat of the team he leads the ACC in assists an excellent passer but also an excellent defender that puts great pressure on the basketball allows his teammates to get out in passing lanes and Duke is an excellent shot blocking team and he has a very low error rate almost a five to one assist turnover ratio that is spectacular and when you consider he's a freshman, it's almost hard to believe. Virginia under Tony Bennett, of course, has always been one of the best defensive teams in the country. Do they have to defend better tonight than they did three weeks ago in order to win this game? I think so. I don't think that Virginia's problems in the first game resulted from offense. They were more from defense. And Virginia is a magnificent program. This is not just a great team. It is a great program. And that program has been built on defense. But Virginia has to keep Duke out of the lane. Duke is, averages about 45 paint points per game, especially Zion Williamson. He averages over 15 paint points per game. Got to make them into jump shooters, especially if you can, two-point jump shooters. With more on tonight's game, if she can hear us, here's Maria Taylor. I barely can, Dan, but you guys were talking about Trey Jones' availability in the last matchup. Well, the question mark coming into this game was Ty Jerome, starting point guard for Virginia, and whether or not he'd be able to go. He's been dealing with back issues and has been day-to-day, -day, but he says it's a lower lumbar strain. He really feels it when he's accelerating and changing directions, but he had a bye week this week. There was no midweek game for Virginia, and after having to miss the Miami game, he said there's no way he was going to miss this match up against you guys so both teams thank you Maria at full strength heading into this one the student section the crowd here in Charlottesville is at full strength as well it is round two between the Blue Devils and the Cavs our first look at fan cam from the student section we'll be showing you that a fair bit Zion Williamson RJ Barrett anchoring one of the best offensive teams in the country Duke fourth the division one in scoring Virginia leads Division One in scoring defense in terms of efficiency. They're both great as well. But Duke a better defensive team than they get credit for, and Virginia a better offensive team than they get credit for. Having both teams ranked in the top five in the country in both offensive and defensive efficiency tells you all you need to know. These may very well be the two best teams in the country. We are ready for the tip of our sonic blockbuster, and Duke controls the opening tip. Virginia starts out in man-to-man. -man. It is primarily a man-to-man -man team trying to protect the elbows and blocks to keep Duke out of the lane. Reddish driving on Jerome, who stays in front of him. Shot clock now down to 10. It'll be R.J. Barrett for three to get Duke on the board early. Guarded by DeAndre Hunter and R.J. Barrett. 
while not a great three-point shooter, can make threes. And you have to go out and get him. When you do, he's an excellent driver of the basketball. Duke not a great three-point shooting team, but Barrett with one early. Guy left the floater short. And Zion Williamson down with a rebound for Duke. And there you see what how Duke's defense has changed as a result of the emergence of Marquise Bolden. They switch one through five, and Bolden wound up on Kyle Guy, made it a very difficult shot. DeAndre Hunter with a rejection on R.J. Barrett, and then on the second attempt came down with a rebound. DeAndre Hunter is a great player. You know, if they played a faster pace, he'd be averaging about 19 a game. Cross court look saved by Jerome. There's the switch. And will Jerome try to dry Bolden? He should. He does. Floater soft off the back of the rim, but it bounces out. When Williamson gets a rebound, he can rip and go and take it himself. And right now, Jack Salt on him as Williamson turns it over. There are four late season Wooded Award candidates in this game. There are 20 in the country, and four of them are in this game. Williamson and Barrett for Duke, and Guy and Hunter for Virginia. A steal by Williamson. The switch, and Trey Jones able to knock that ball away. Duke averages about 10 steals per game to go along with almost eight blocked shots. This is a team that makes it very difficult to run any kind of offense. And it goes without saying, live ball turnovers against Duke can be devastating. And here's another one. This guy got a piece of it, but it'll still be Duke ball. Yeah, Cam Reddish doesn't get near the credit he deserves for being a terrific steals guy. But Jones able to pop that ball away right out of the hands of Hunter. And it's taken the other way. And it was actually Diakite who was knocked out of his hands, but taken the other way by Zion Williamson. He knows what to do with it. And two threes in the first two and a half minutes for R.J. Barrett, who comes in at 31% from beyond the arc. If Duke makes those shots, if they knock down threes and make jump shots, I don't think anybody beats them. That's how good they are at everything else. And Virginia a little bit out of sorts at the offensive end. A couple of turnovers, a couple of errant passes. They need a bucket, and they'll get it from Mamadi Diakite. Diakite is in the top 10 in block shots in the ACC. Coming off a really good game against Miami. Had 11 points, six rebounds, blocked three or four shots. And when they can get back and set up their D, it'll be Diakite initially guarding Williamson, who draws an immediate double team. Now gets it back. Good job by Diakite to get his body in front of Williamson. Baseline Jones, floater, no. And he got it back. But stepped out of bounds, it belongs to the Hoos. Everything is contested. It's almost like when a running back goes past the line of scrimmage and you're punching, knocking the ball away. You had better be secure and strong with that ball because both teams very proficient at getting a hand on the ball. Duke winning the first game at Cameron three weeks ago by two without Trey Jones. Virginia made only three threes in the game in 17 attempts. The only loss Virginia has sustained this year was against Duke as we got a foul call going against Mark Reese Bolden. In the cylinder, the referee called. That's what that motion means as he... Crowded him in the cylinder. I don't know. That's that looks like that, that's called defense. Trey Jones, such an outstanding on ball defender. He's on Ty Jerome. And Bolden recovers after the double team. Boy, a bit of a force there by Guy, and Williamson rejects Salt. But Cam Reddish was all over Kyle Guy, and he forced it. That was a bad shot. That, that was the equivalent of a turnover, and Virginia doesn't turn the ball over very much. They don't take very many bad shots. That was a bad one. That's the 45th block this season for Williamson, and this is the 23rd game for Duke. Into traffic. Ball's loose. Bolden's got it, rejected by Diakite. Boy, what a defensive possession by Virginia. Everyone converged on Zion Williamson. A 
Hunter, the red shirt sophomore, turning into one of the best players in the country. A look inside for Schultz. <laughs> Terrific job by Diakite of presenting himself so he could go with that high-low look to Jack Salt. I think Virginia is going to have to try to keep looking for the switch they want and take advantage of those switches. Wow, three threes already for the Blue Devils. Two by Barrett and now one by Williamson. I think Virginia is going to have to just live with that right now. Because you start extending and then you're going to open up driving lines. Good pass. The Akite for three. How about that? His fifth made three of the season in 11 attempts. Well, right now, the big guys have proven to be the best passers oh. early on. And Reddish banks in a three to make it 14 to 7. They do four of four from wow. three point range. But again, I'm not sure that you want to change your game plan. I still think that Virginia is better off packing it in and make Duke prove it over the top, see if they can keep it up. Another high low. Speaking of over the top, Diakite gathers and lays it in. Boy, the big guy, Salt Diakite, trading the ball beautifully in the early going. Well, they're taking advantage of switches. I mean, you had Trey Jones switched off on a big guy, and Diakite just pinned him. They're five for five from three point range. When did Duke become the Warriors? <laughs> Boy, RJ Barrett's got three of them already. Now Guy gets a switch, Bolden on him. For a big guy, though, Bolden does an outstanding job moving his feet. Re another rejection by Zion Williamson. And Reddish will lay it in. Duke turning defense into offense in the early going. And you called it. Marquise Bolden doing a really good job of staying in front and staying in front of a guard. And Zion Williamson able to knock it away, but it's been the three-point accuracy in addition to defense. The accuracy a surprise. And NCAA coaches and Infinity are taking a timeout to fight cancer with Infinity's $1 million donation to the American Cancer Society. Dan Schulman, Jay Billis, Maria Taylor back with you here in Charlottesville. Duke has made five threes in six and a half minutes. They made two threes in the first matchup in the entire game against Virginia. Virginia and Duke have combined for six of eight from three-point range in this game to this point. That is more than the first game had combined. Kyle Guy, Jack Salt go to the bench. Braxton Key and Kihei Clark, the freshman point guard, have come into the game now for Virginia. Javid Delorier checks in for Duke. Kihei Clark, a guy who started the last game for Virginia against Miami. That was the game Ty Jerome missed with a back issue. Nine points, six assists, but also six turnovers for Clark, who gives them a, a really different feel because he is ultra quick. They can play at a bit of a different pace when he's in the game. Well, he's an excellent defender as well. He can get up underneath you as a ball handler. He puts really good pressure on the ball, and he's relentless. He's a really good competitor. And he's going to be a challenge for Trey Jones, and Trey Jones will be a challenge for him. This is just a great matchup, Hunter and Barrett. These teams so different in the way they approach things. But both excellent teams on both ends of the floor. Jerome, too strong. And we get a whistle underneath and a call going against Virginia as we take a look at tonight's Sonic Blockbuster. The third straight time they've met with both of them being ranked in the top five. Duke has 69 wins against top five teams, second all time. And as you can see, Tony Bennett, two and six against Duke when they are ranked in the top five. Right now, Duke is number two, Virginia's number three, Tennessee is number one. They beat Florida in the game just before ours. You can see it, just a different feel with Kihei Clark putting pressure on the basketball. And we got a travel called on Trey Jones. Just sped him up a little bit. And Clark has played injured during part of this season, got right under the screen, kept in front. Yeah, broke a bone in his left hand and never missed a game. Played through it, had surgery, and then played sparingly for a couple of games, but never actually missed a game. Boy, Duke switching everything. Williamson's on Ty Jerome right now. 
Neff starts slipping some of these. Hunter from the baseline. Count it. DeAndre Hunter is a great young player. Plays hard on both ends of the floor. Athletic, very skilled. Another guy who goes after it on every play. Barrett posting on Jerome, calling for it, and he gets it. Salt the double team. Shot clock a factor. Reddish. And it belongs to Virginia. Another great defensive possession. Anytime the ball goes in the post, they are coming with that post-to-post -post double. They don't want to let it come out on the same side. Pull up Hunter. Not this time. And look who's here. The king is here. LeBron James, Rajon Rondo with him as they have shown up here in Charlottesville. Must be a big game, my friend. They're all big, Dan. <laughs> Shot clock running down again. Barrett for three. His wow. fourth made three-pointer of the game. Boy, who could have predicted this? A team that is shooting 29% from three-point range in ACC play. Six of seven in this young game. And Barrett, 31% on the season. Four of them already tonight. Hunter again from the elbow. Boy, is he good. Who says the mid-range shot is dead? Two dribble pull up, went straight up. Just a beautiful stroke. Duke six for seven from three-point range. That is the early story in this game, to say the least. Williamson baseline spinning. And through the hands of Delorier, a Duke turnover. Ty Jerome almost got there to be able to draw a charge on that spin just yeah. a little bit late. Speaking of spins, but Clark can't finish, and here comes Duke in transition. Williamson all the way and draws the foul. He'll be at the free throw line when we come back. Duke by nine. This is an infinity timeout for the win. Learn more at infinitytimeout.com. To ever play the game. Three-time National Player of the Year, Hall of Famer Ralph Sampson is with Maria Taylor. Yeah, and he says he comes to about three games so far this season. He's already been to. Okay, what's your takeaway so far from watching maybe the, the first few minutes? Miss? You know, everybody's getting the jitters out, but Duke is playing very well. Uh, six for seven from three, that's hard to beat. But hopefully we can, cool, we can cool them down a little bit. Well, no one's played the game better than you. You got to give me some of the fondest memories that you have being a Cavalier. Well, my memories are across the street with University Hall, but we're going to tear that down this year and raise a lot of money for the school. But playing here with this crowd like this over there was amazing. And it still exists today with Tony Bennett, one of the best coaches in the country. Okay, you were a transcendent player. The guy at the free throw line is also transcendent. What's your takeaway from seeing him live? It's a big boy. And uh, so athletic, you know, he's got a long way to go to get better to the next level, but it'll come. He, he's got the drive, motivation, and I think it'll be really good. Last question. Do you remember throwing it down on Jay Billis back in the day? <laughs> Jay remembers it, I don't. Thanks for your time, Ralph. Thank you, thank you. It took me a lot of therapy, yeah. actually, to forget it. One, one of the great players of all time and a great guy. What a feed. Guy with a bounce pass into Jay Huff to bring Virginia back within nine. Yeah, it's not only that he threw down on you, he claims that it was, I mean, he didn't, you don't even, he doesn't even remember it. Like, you were just Why should he? Guy. Why should he? <laughs> you were below his sight line. He couldn't tell who you were. How about in this game, Dan? Duke's points, every one of Duke's points has been scored by freshmen. And so far in the ball game, Ty Jerome, Kyle Guy have not scored a point. They have got to get going offensively for Virginia to win this game. Barrett called for the offensive foul, tried to establish post position. Now Kyle Guy coming off the screen by Jay Huff and that beautiful pocket pass in between two defenders. And he draws so much attention. But I, I think he's got to be really aggressive and looking to score. Jay Huff, an interesting guy. 7-1. He can pick and pop, shoot from outside as well. Good move. It'll be key for three. And he runs down his own rebound. Transfer from Alabama to fresh 30 now for UVA. And the top rebounder 
on this Virginia team and especially an ACC play almost seven rebounds a game Jack White's in the game for the first time now for Duke Virginia running its sides offense Hunter one on one kicks it back out loose ball goes to Williamson and he will lay it in Boy, Virginia has not turned it over very much but each turnover has cost him on the other end. Duke is scoring off every miscue by Virginia. And as we mentioned near the top of the show, live ball turnovers are especially costly against Duke. Huff. Around and out, and White down with a rebound for the Blue Devils. A really good footwork, but you have to get that to go. Barrett again. And he knocks down another one. R.J. Barrett is five for five from three-point range. He is absolutely on fire. Now you've seen R.J. Barrett knock down a few shots in a game. Nothing like this since he's been in college. A season high in made threes already here tonight. He has a miss from beyond the arc. Up once, and he's got Trey Jones on him. Jones fronting him. He drives on White and tips it back home. Well, that was a really good job by Trey Jones. You're going to have no chance if you play on the side or behind Jay Huff, but he just sat on his legs in front of him and then tried to, tried to get good pressure on the ball to discourage that pass. Bolden. And a travel. This needs to go right away. As soon as he catches it, go. Timeout on the floor, 7.24 to go. It's been the R.J. Barrett shooting show here tonight well rj barrett averages about 23 points per game in conference play coming into this game he had made 21 threes in acc play already five in this one the lefty looking more like curry rj barrett had hit four threes in a game earlier this year against syracuse he was four of 17 in that overtime loss to the Orange in this one, in the first half against Virginia. Barrett has 15 points, five of five from three. Duke is seven of eight from three-point range in this game. That's 87%. And every one of Duke's points has been scored by Barrett, Zion Williamson, or Cam Reddish. 29 for that freshman class. Jerome back into the game. Dumps it down to Diakite, who misses right near the rim. It'll stay with Virginia. Barrett, known as more if of a scorer than a shooter. He's a great athlete. He's great in transition. He can get to the rim. If he has a consistent outside shot to his game, he goes to another level that very few can ever conceive of being a part yeah, of. Very, very difficult to guard without being able to consistently knock down threes. You add that, they feel like saying, forget it. But right now, the... The guards for Virginia have to get involved and score. Both Jerome and Guy have been quiet from an offensive perspective. Neither with a point yet in this game. A good look for Guy from the corner, and the rebound down to Barrett. So Duke seven for eight from three, Virginia one for five from three. Good cross-court look. It winds up in the hands of Barrett. His first miss from three-point range tonight. Wow, tough pass. And Huff couldn't finish off the window. Awfully difficult to execute. And Jay Huff almost landed in the lap of LeBron James after trying to lay that one in. <laughs> Along with Rondo here, the next game for Virginia. Comes your way Monday night, big Monday, Chapel Hill against North Carolina. What a game that should be, another big game of the ACC. And then Tuesday night, a Sonic blockbuster. It'll be Duke at Louisville. Both games also available on the ESPN app. You're talking about the four teams right up at the top of the ACC standings right now. And how good was Kobe White today against Miami in that overtime win by North Carolina? Had 33 points and every clutch shot. Boy, good help by R.J. Barrett to take away that jump shot. Louisville, by the way, in overtime right now with Florida State. Around and out, and the follow won't go for Huff. And there's a lid on the basket right now for Virginia. Boy, Virginia feels it, that had to be deflating. Bolden 
a foul and a chance to shoot a couple of free throws. And there was a deflating expression on the face of Jay Huff after that miss. He couldn't believe he didn't follow it. Well, Virginia has had several point blank shots. They've been challenged, but they've been very close. Things you should finish. Now, obviously, that should have been finished by he just couldn't get it. He had it in his fingertips, but wasn't able to completely to control the ball. But the key has really been the defense on Ty Jerome and Kyle Guy. Kyle Guy's had one clean look at the basket, that from the right corner. Other than that, everything has been challenged, and Jerome and Guy have yet to score a point. They combined to score 27 and a half points per game. They're a combined 0 for 7 from the floor tonight. Mike Krzyzewski told us at practice yesterday he thinks Marquise Bolden is playing, quote, great right now. He's averaging about eight points, six rebounds the last three games as he gets a breather and Delorier comes back in. But a guy who's really had an up and down three years didn't start off this season well with Duke, but has been playing much better lately. Well, he's really changed their team with his ability to move his feet and switch out on a guard and guard that player for one or two dribbles, maybe even three. That allows to Duke that allows Duke to switch at all five positions and it's been very difficult for some teams to deal with It's certainly been difficult for Virginia to deal with tonight Zion Williamson on the bench right now for the Blue Devils Jerome driving on reddish that's deflected by white out of bounds Virginia ball with four to shoot Cam reddish guarding Ty Jerome on that play switched off for a second and switched back but reddish probably doesn't get the credit he deserves for being a an improved and very good defender. He gets a ton of steals. He is long. The Blue Devils have three different players averaging two or more steals per game. There's Hunter again. He's keeping a minute right now. Well, if you add Jerome and Guy being a threat and scoring to what DeAndre Hunter's capable of doing, Virginia can get right back in this. Barrett, no. Hunter kind of forced him to go right. Barrett's a lefty, and it was a tough finish. Looks like Virginia wants to get into its sides where they'll it's basically move or blocker Hunter might have gotten poked in the eye right now and they bumped heads and oh you're right and another player is down Diakite, Diakite is down in the corner Diakite and Hunter bumped heads as they were making that exchange and Diakite obviously getting the worst of it watch this little dribble handoff action Ooh. They just went head to head contact there. They're just looking at the ball, trying to make the exchange, and it's an unusual play. And Diakite is still down. Tony Bennett over for a look, asking him if he's all right. And in this day and age, with what we have come to know in recent years about concussions, and not saying he has one, but you've got to be ultra careful with this kind of a thing and run him through a checklist and to make sure he's okay. And great to see him up under his own power walking back to the bench. Another guy who's getting better and better has added to his offensive game this year. And knocks down the occasional three, can help stretch the floor. Good passer. Kihei Clark takes Diakite's place. And you can see it looks like he's cut inside his lip as well. So Virginia gets much smaller now with the guy Jerome and Clark all in the game at the same time. Duke has led by as many as 14. They're up 12 right now. Jerome out to Clark. Six on the shot clock. Jerome with a deep three. Got it. A big bucket for Ty Jerome and Virginia. Ty Jerome needed that. Virginia needed it more. He needs to continue to look for his offense because he can really drill it from deep. Jerome is a competitor. I mean, this kid is an absolute gamer. And even though he hadn't scored up until that point, he still has a confident look. 
And Jay, they just lost Hunter as he picked up his second foul. Braxton Key, who's played well and is a really good player, back in for him. But potentially, they're without Hunter for the rest of the half as Jack White lays it in off the inbounds. Boy, very unusual for Virginia to give up a bucket that easy on out-of-bounds underneath. And it wasn't anything special. Jack White just cut right to the basket from the right wing and was wide open for a layup. Reddish on Guy, White switches onto Jerome. Guy off a screen, tough pass stolen by Delorier. Knocked away though by Jerome. And we will eventually have a held ball and the possession arrow will give it to Virginia. 3.41 to go in the half, Duke still in front. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Sonic. Get a quarter pound double cheeseburger or a Slinger Plus Tots for just $2.99. And State Farm. Talk to an agent today at 800 State Farm. Building. Let's go. We're earlier today on game day. Gabriel Simmons lined up the half court shot and sunk it again. But that's what happens when you come to UVA because right now the students are 4 4 4 with the half court shot on college game day. And coming up on the Jeep halftime report, you get Seth Greenberg, you get Reese Davis, and you also get Jay Will, but the only one that hustled up over here. Where's Jay Will? I, I don't know. little brother I never wanted. I've lost him. The good news is you get to talk about this game by yourself. So what have you seen so far? Well, I think actually Virginia forcing to shoot those three-point shots. That's good. They've kept them out of the lane. They've got to stop turning over and live ball turnovers. And Kyle Guy and, Ky and Jerome got to start to make some shots. All right, plenty more from this guy at halftime. Hopefully we can find Jay Will in the next 325. The story is Duke is 7 out of 9 from three-point range. R.J. Barrett, 5 of 6. Three a little bit short for Jerome. Offensive rebound, though, for Key. Boy, it looked like Kyle Guy was going to have a three-pointer off that key rebound, but R.J. Barrett there to take it away. Wow, what a tough runner there by Jerome. Well, Duke has 11 made field goals in this game, Dan. Seven of them are from three-point range. Like, the game plan and the execution of making Duke shoot from the perimeter has been really sound. They've just made everything. Reddish will quiet the crowd with the eighth made three of the half for Duke. Remarkable. And Zion Williamson getting through that double team, just splitting it and allowing him to make that pass. Guy. He needed it. They needed it. Back down to nine. Well, he needs to thank Jack Salt for that great screen. He just came right off of Salt, and the defense couldn't get around him to give him that open look. Barrett again. Jerome the rebound, and Virginia can inch closer. Boy, this last two minutes, really big for Virginia. Can the Cavaliers get stops and scores to get back in this? Boy, the gamble by Williamson on the double team. Somebody's open. And it's Kihei Clark who knocks down a three. continue to pack the paint make Duke continue to prove it over the top when you see the shots from the student section that's Katie Taylor a media studies major who is doing the camera work for us tonight to bring you a little bit closer to the scene and the action here in Charlottesville she's Taylor number one <laughs> Williamson driving up and in and a foul as well well the Virginia bench asking for the hook with the right arm of Zion Williamson, but he's just able to get low to get past with that explosive that gets past Braxton Key. It might have looked like a hook, but it really wasn't. But just so hard to keep Zion Williamson out of the paint. You know, Jay, with R.J. Barrett's three-point shooting being such a big story, it almost feels like Williamson's been a little quiet tonight. Got 11, I think. Uh, 12. Five for six, 12 points. Yeah, tough first half for him. <laughs> He's among ACC leaders in scoring, rebounding, field goal percentage, steals, and blocks. There's the switch. Guy with a three. Boy, and that was over a very good contest by Marquise Bolden. 
but what a battle between Trey Jones and Kihei Clark. Two excellent freshman defenders that can really pressure the ball. And what a battle between two of the best teams in the country. And there's a Duke turnover. Kyle Guy got the switch with Marquise Bolden switching off on him. And as soon as he had the switch, he realized he's going to get a little bit of space and pulled right up off the step back and drilled it with good defense. That was well defended. It was just great offense. Again, Duke has led by as many as 14. It's down to six now in the closing minute of the first half. Important for Virginia here to get the shot they want. They've got a matchup they want. Bolden back on Guy. He's trying to get Jack Salt away so he can take this one-on-one. -on -one. Bolden again switching on to Guy who drives him this time and lays it in. That's what Virginia needs to continue to do. Get the switch they want and then take that switch on. 11-3 run for the Hoos. Shot clock turned off. They're giving it to Williamson. Let him go one on five. He guarding him. Eight seconds. Five seconds. Williamson bangs with Salt and turns it over. And the first half will come to a close with Virginia on an 11-3 run to get back within four after Duke shot the lights out early in the half. And then Virginia got hot shooting the three late in the half. And look at the difference of the three-point shooting in the first game and here tonight as they've combined to make a remarkable 13 out of 21 threes in the first half. Duke 39, Virginia 35. After these messages, it's the Jeep Halftime Report with Reese Davis, Seth Greenberg, and Jay Williams. And you saw they gave up a lot of threes in that first half to Duke. Now on the other side of the ball, John Shire telling me that Duke got a little tired towards the end. They weren't moving as much as they were in that first half. And they have to do a very good job continuing to try to get the ball in the lanes, pass out for those uncontested shots. We are ready for the start of the second half of our Sonic Blockbuster in one change. Remember, Mamadi Diakite banged heads with DeAndre Hunter near the end of the first half. Diakite's on the bench, but he's not on the floor to start the second half. Kihei Clark starts for Virginia. A good start to the second half for Virginia, forcing a difficult two from Cam Reddish. When Kihei Clark came into the game, Virginia ran much better offense. It's almost like they had more mismatches they could exploit with their quickness and more what a position. pass. Salt trying to free himself. Got to get out of the lane. Three Clark seconds. with a floater. Not there. But the rebound down to Barrett. Boy, had Salt been able to handle that pass, he had an easy bucket. Yeah, it was a bit. You drew him through a beautiful pass. Just couldn't grab it. Jones puts his head down and finishes with the left hand. He is so good with that left hand. I mean, that was a spectacular finish and a very difficult shot. And you talk a lot, Jay, about guys getting low on the drive. He really got low there. Well, he plays low. Plays low on the defensive end, offense. Well, he is beyond his years, Trey Jones is, in his understanding of how to play. Jerome driving, finds a cutting Kyle Guy. Well, Jerome is a special passer. That was basically a Nash dribble, taking it to the other side of the bucket without picking up your dribble right underneath the basket. A good job there by Jerome to stay in front of Barrett. Not an easy thing to do. Reddish lines up a three and gets the friendly roll. And Reddish shooting the ball better lately, coming off a 24-point effort against Boston College on Tuesday. Where it had that great 23-point game against Florida State where he hit the game winner on the out-of-bounds underneath. Good drive. And Jerome absorbs the contact shoulder-to-shoulder shoulder when a foul called on Barrett. Just love the way Ty Jerome competes. Realized that he had Barrett out of position. And you can see keeping his dribble and a really nice cut by Kyle Guy. Instead of just waiting there at the three-point line for a catch and shoot, he moved. And as soon as Cam Reddish turned his head, he was able to ra race right past him to the bucket.
Jay, that's the first free throw attempt of the night for Virginia. An exceptionally low foul total in this game. The two teams have combined to commit only eight fouls in this game. Well, that's the way Virginia plays. They just don't foul very much as a result. Their games go a lot quicker. They're done in less than two hours. Tony Bennett wants to get home. <laughs> Five-point lead for Duke. Duke won the first matchup 72-70 at Cameron three weeks ago. I'll tell you, DeAndre Hunter has done a very good job on Zion Williamson. Bolden, he turns it over. Going up against an excellent defender in Jack Saul, who positions his body about as well as any big guy in the ACC. Well, he could play on the defensive line of any NFL team, size-wise. Right now with Jerome bringing the ball up, that means they don't have to go against Trey Jones bringing it up. Both teams 8-1 and one in the ACC. North Carolina with an overtime win over Miami today. They're now 9-1. and one. Tipped by Jones, stolen by Barrett. A guy trying to drive that switch with Marquise Bolden and turned it over. Good pass to Reddish. And he knocks down the three. Boy, that, that's what makes Duke dangerous right there. Getting the live ball turnover, taking it the other way, and turning defense into offense about as fast as any team in the country can do it. Virginia's only turned it over five times, and Duke has turned those turnovers into ten points. The live ball turnovers are what's unusual for Virginia. Hunter over Bolden and a foul. Well, Kyle Guy, when he got the switch and Bolden was on him, he tried to drive it and then got caught in the air with nowhere to go. And R.J. Barrett is essentially a point guard out on the floor. Nobody picked him up, never stopped the ball, and he just casually flipped it over to Cam Reddish, who was just positioning himself at that three-point line. One thing Duke has done tonight, and they've done it very well over the course of the season, is turning defense into offense. They are among leaders in the country in both blocks and steals, and those are those live ball turnovers you're talking about. Yeah, it all starts with Trey Jones putting pressure on the ball. Then they're out in passing lanes. Both Reddish, Williamson, excellent at getting steals. Now a zone, a little 1-2-2 two, two zone. Tony Bennett doesn't play a lot of zone, but giving him a different look, trying to keep Duke out of the lane. Still going to double when it goes into the post. Reddish open in the corner. Barrett with the offensive rebound and lays it in. Ty Jerome just could not get a body. He turned to block out, but just couldn't get a body on R.J. Barrett. Those are Barrett's first points on something other than a three-pointer tonight. You know, Duke is a really good offensive rebounding team. Their offensive rebounding percentage is 38%, which is pretty darn good. Guy got white in the air, waited for him to come down, and then left the jumper short. Well, still a really tough shot. And Jack White, 6'8", and long arm. Williamson knocks down Clark. No call. Baseline jumper Jones not there, but tipped out to Barrett. Reddish wide open. Now, this has been a clinic from the three-point line. Offensive rebound, turning it into a three. And I think Tony Bennett has got a, a legitimate beef. That did look like an offensive foul. The lead up to 11 after the reddish three. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you. Legal guarding position means two feet on the floor facing the ball handler. That's what Kihei Clark had. And this, by any definition, was a charge that just went uncalled. Tony Bennett talked to one of the officials about it. I don't know what the official said. You know, they just missed it, but they just missed it. That's a charge, and it's not close. And the possession wound up with Cam Reddish knocking down a three, his fifth of the night. So he's got five threes. R.J. Barrett's got five threes. And the Blue Devils are a ridiculous 11 for 15 from three-point range they, tonight. They have been magnificent shooting the basketball and getting open shots in the second half. A couple of them have come off offensive rebounds. Good cut. And Williamson takes it away. He is so quick. I mean, Hunter was open. And Williamson just recovered with those long arms to knock that ball away. And a held ball is the call. It'll belong to Virginia when we come back. And also when we come back, Jay Billis going 94 feet with not one but two members of the Wahoos.
That's a high GPA there in the middle. Jack Salt and Kyle Guy brought to you by Smile Direct Club. All right, what's your favorite thing to eat? Uh, my favorite thing is Chipotle. I love a good steak. And your favorite TV show? Um, Friends or Game of Thrones? Uh, I'd have to say Game of Thrones. Right. What does he do best on the basketball court? Uh, hustle and set screens. What does he do best on a basketball court? Uh, shoot coming off my screen. <laughs> <laughs> does he ever pass? Uh, no, he shoots. Yeah, that's oh, what, my that's God. And you're a great screener, by the way. I don't think you get enough attention. All right, to finish this up, I want you to do your best Jack Salt impression. Hi, my name's Jack Salt. I'm from New Zealand. I like to set screens and play Fortnite. <laughs> your best American accent. I would like to buy a cheeseburger. Ninety-four <laughs> <laughs> <Not your feet. laughs> That's so good. <laughs> Those guys are so funny. Eleven point lead for Duke. Shot clock running down a bit, and Guy puts up one from deep. Hunter runs it down. Well, great job by Braxton Key to get a finger on that to keep it alive. Just tip it back. Guy driving. Forced oh. it up. It's going to count. He just will not stop. Guarded by bigger, sometimes more athletic defenders. Just drives right around Cam Reddish into Jack White and gets it to go off the glass. He just will not stop moving and keeps attacking every possession. And a big three-point play to get it down to eight. 14 and a half to go. Number two, Duke. Number three, Virginia. And a good one here in Charlottesville. Behind the back is Williamson, keeps the dribble alive. Hunter has done a great job of staying in front of Williamson and keeping him out of the lane. And Jerome does a great job staying in front of Barrett, and taking it away from him. And this game is really about getting stops for Virginia. You know, Duke has proven it over the top all game long, but they have to keep proving it. And a block is called on Reddish. More action coming your way tonight from the NBA. The Saturday primetime game features Russell Westbrook, who's got eight straight triple doubles, taking on the Thunder, uh, the Rockets, rather, and James Harden, who scored 30 or more in 28 consecutive games. Two of the very best in the sport. Coverage tips with NBA Countdown at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. I wonder if LeBron will check out that game after he's done being here in person watching this game. What a rebound by Hunter. But then stolen away by Jones, and it's Barrett out ahead of the pack. Well, that's what Duke does so well. You know, they just get out so quickly in transition. Give Trey Jones credit for looking up court to spot R.J. Barrett. And as soon as Jones had it, R.J. knew he can go. It feels like every Virginia turnover has been a live ball turnover, not a travel or an offensive foul or anything. What a block there by Cam Reddish. Boy, Duke does not get near the credit they deserve for being not a good defensive team, but a great defensive team. If Duke played at the same pace, which would be 62 possessions per game as Virginia, they would be allowing 56 points per game. Trey Jones with a beautiful pass ahead. Eyes up. And just lofting that ball to where it can be picked up by Barrett and thrown down by the lefty. Fast break points, not surprisingly favor Duke, but it's 13 to nothing. Now Virginia's a team that they don't get out and run very often. Nice feed from Williamson, and Jay Huff comes over and rejects it. Hit the court hard and is a little bit slow getting up, but appears to be okay. He hit his head as well. We have not seen Diakite in the game here in the second half after he collided with Hunter in the first half. Huff for three. <laughs> Huff made a difference in the first game. Did a good job getting to the bucket and knocking down a perimeter shot. Williamson baseline got caught under the bucket. And turns it over again. The fourth turnover committed by Zion Williamson tonight. What a block by Braxton Key. Barely gave up a sliver of the baseline and was able to recover and block that shot. What a big time play by the Alabama transfer Braxton Key. 
Usually when Zion Williamson gets to the basket, it's two points, but Key was able to keep him from getting it from underneath the basket. It looked like it got part of the, the bottom of the backboard. Boy, just a couple of great looks. Uh, our crew, Jeff Dufine and Doug Holmes, should come to the truck with a, a lot of great looks from a lot of different angles here tonight for this big game. 54-47 Duke, 12-34 to go. ESPN and the ACC will bring you the ACC Network starting in August. 15 universities, one network. Visit getaccn.com to learn more. What a league it is. What an ACC tournament it'll be in Charlotte in a few weeks, and what a big game this is with the winner of this one moving into a tie for first place in the ACC with North Carolina, which defeated Miami in overtime today, so the Heels are 9-1. and one. You know, Just about everything is even in this ballgame except the way Duke shot the ball from three-point range. Wow. Huff with an unbelievable pass into Key. Great cut, no pressure on the ball. Needle threaded. Virginia just able to lift up that Duke defense to open up some room to the basket to be able to cut. Williamson gives it up this time. The swing to Barrett. Corner three, Jones. Yes. Boy, everybody is getting in on this three party. 12 for 16 for a team that is near the bottom of Division I standings in three-point shooting on the season. 29% from three-point range in ACC play. And they have knocked down shots like they are Golden State. Good pass. My goodness. Open is Guy. Jerome had it. Jones knocks it away. Great awareness by Trey Jones. I mean, Ty Jerome had that ball. And a late whistle and a foul call going against Kyle Guy. Virginia had lifted up the Duke defense. A nice screen and then slipped to the bucket by Key and a great delivery by Jay Huff. And then on the other end, Trey Jones getting in on the act. It's been all threes for Duke in this one. By State Farm, here to help life go right. Trey Jones of the line feels like a potentially big swing. Guy had an open three, didn't knock it down. Jerome had the offensive rebound. Jones took it away from him, got down the court, and drew the foul on the driving layup. So, I mean, not to say that's a five-point swing, but that felt like a big moment right now. Salt and Guy on the bench for Virginia, and the lead just like that. Jay's back to 10. Yeah, it seems like Trey Jones has more than just one steal. He has certainly knocked the ball away on several occasions. He did there again. Wait, what up? It's just a great read. He came from the backside of Jay Huff and knocked that ball away. He just read that Huff wasn't looking there. He came came across his arm, though. That, would, that should have been called a foul, but a very smart play by Trey Jones. And the fans are in quite a mood when it comes to the officials right now, feeling that Virginia is not getting their fair share of the calls. And now Williamson called for another turnover, this time on a travel that's four on the score sheet they didn't add the one when he hit the ball on the bottom of the backboard hit his foot and went out of bounds but unofficially it's got to be at least five turnovers on Williamson tonight and Williamson has not scored in the second half 12 points in the first zero in the second to this point Jerome can't get by Reddish who's really having a great night he's gonna try again Hunter Deep in the corner. Tough shot. And Reddish a rebound, and here they come. Well defended by R.J. Barrett. Tough to call out a play in this environment tonight with the way the noise level has been most of the game. Well, it's supposed to be a screen for the screener. Barrett for three. Williamson tipped it away, but into the hands of Hunters. We near the midway point of the second half, and Duke up by 10. Jerome gets free, and it goes. A terrific job to relocate. When he caught the ball, just one dribble to his left and got right into his shot. Never rushed. I'll tell you, Virginia 
they compete. They have seen shot after shot go in that really their defense has been good. It's just Duke's offense has been unusually good. Yeah, 12 out of 17 from three-point range. That's pretty good That's on pretty Carter. good. Look at Jones. What a hesitation to move, and then the floater goes down. And you have said all year he may not be their best player, but he is their most important player. No question. I mean, their defense is so much better with Trey Jones on the floor. Everything is better for this team. Good look for Clark. Air ball. He's a little bit out of sync on that possession. Good show there by Huff. Williamson has it taken away by Key. Yeah, they're just sitting right on that to knock it away instead of going up to contest it up top. Take it away before he can get it up there. Great play. Braxton Key's had a terrific game. He's really done a great job on the glass and defensively. And getting a lot of minutes because Diakite has not returned to the game after bumping heads with Hunter late in the first half. Jerome, how about that? Majoring in English off the glass. <laughs> Feels like the whole second half, Virginia's been about a, about a stop and a bucket away from making this one really heated. Nice pass from Barrett into Bolden and a foul called on Huff. Well, with the ball screen out top, Bolden did a great job of just rolling hard to the basket, and Huff tried to hedge hard. There, tried to get the slip, but... Just Jerome getting to the basket on an angle. You know, that wasn't poorly defended. It was just a really good offensive play, and he had to launch that up high to get it over Marquise Bolden. Duke is also perfect from the free throw line tonight. Not a lot of attempts, but they're eight for eight. As Salt and Guy come back into the game, probably for the duration, Huff and Clark sit down. It's not like Virginia has not shot the ball well. You know, usually if Virginia shoots, you know, 45, between 45 and 50 percent, they're going to be ahead and they're probably going to win. Even if Duke had made only half of its threes, which would still be a great percentage, if Duke had made half of its threes tonight, Virginia would be leading yes. the game. I mean, it has been an extraordinary shooting night for Duke. Bolden sits, White back in. R.J. Barrett is fouled. He came over and blocked it, but the call's going with the body on a Hunter. Yeah, even though Hunter had his hands up, they're saying that the referee is saying that he threw his chest into R.J. Barrett. I'm not sure I agree with that one. That was offense initiated contact. He's moving his feet. Yeah, I don't I don't agree with that at all. That call was made from behind the play, so really to be able to see that, the referee was out of position for that kind of call. And it's the third on a hunter. Barrett goes to the free throw line for the first time tonight. 68% on the season. Generally speaking this year, Duke has been one of the best teams in the country on their two-point percentage because they get to the rim so often, but they have struggled from the line and from beyond the arc. And kind of a turnaround here tonight. And again, the dominant story, the three-point shooting, 12 for 17. That's the difference in the game. Virginia going with that ball screen continuity. Oh, nice move by Key. Couldn't finish, but Jack Salt says, I got you. And Key was in his way. It's almost like Salt pushed his teammate out of the way to be able to Get that stick back dunk. You know, Dan, you pointed it out. Virginia's been hovering right around this point, but they cannot get a stop. Every time they get within striking distance, Duke has an answer, and R.J. Barrett knocks down yet another three. His sixth on the night, the 13th for the Blue Devils. And this has been extraordinary shooting by a team... All of us have pointed out that could be their only weakness in shooting. Well, Jack Saul told you 94 feet, Kyle Guy never passes. You might have to redo it. Well, he saw it. The screen was so good, he couldn't ignore it. <laughs> oh, that was just a great screen roll play. And when Jack Salt rolls to the basket, he can clear a path.
Inside 10 on the shot clock. Reddish. Really good defense by Virginia to force a very difficult shot. I'm surprised that R.J. Barrett did not drive DeAndre Hunter when he had him on him. Just take him, see if he can get a, another foul. Remember the clock tends to go quickly in a Virginia game. Long possessions, very few whistles. And nearing the six-minute mark with an eight-point deficit. And look at the hustle by Key, but he saves it to Deloria. It looked like he could have just grabbed that ball instead of trying to throw it off Deloria. Zion Williamson getting ready to check back in at the next opportunity. He should drive this matchup. Jones for three. Kept alive by White, but a Duke foul. And Jerome and Delorier get a little tanged up after the whistle blew. And everybody try to make sure that it doesn't get any more heated than it already is. Timeout on the floor, 5.44 to go. It'll be Virginia ball when we come back in an eight-point game. Just two great schools talking about the last book they read. <laughs> ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by H&R Block. In person or online, Block has your back. Coverage is brought to you by State Farm. Here to help life go right. Dan Schulman, Jay Billis, Maria Taylor, John Paul Jones Arena, Charlottesville, Virginia. Another look at that last play. There was originally a personal foul called on Delorier, and then Delorier and Jerome got tangled up. You can see that an inadvertent kind of poke in the face from Jerome. Delorier wasn't happy. Jerome reached out and kind of made a move for the ball, and they have each been assessed a dead ball technical foul. Really not much to it, but the first foul, the first personal foul for both of them, and it just moves each team a little bit closer to the one and one Duke with six team fouls Virginia with five But Virginia keeps the ball they call that point of interruption So they're, they're basically offsetting offsetting penalties if you will and I actually misspoke the personal foul was on Jack White And then the technical fouls on both Jerome and Delorier eight point lead for Duke five and a half to go Hunters open and hits a three a terrific job cutting against the grain and Ty Jerome had his eyes up looking for that the whole way it's beautifully executed by Virginia Williamson good deep position by Bolden and it goes well he really did get deep position just sealed Jay Huff right under the bucket he posted so deep he didn't have to make a post move. Huff more of an offensive threat perhaps than Salt, but not quite the big body that Salt is. He's taller than Salt, but not as strong as Salt is. Yeah, doesn't have the low base to be able to keep Bolden out of the lane. What a catch. Williamson on Guy. Huff, the kick, open again is Hunter. Never mind. Zion Williamson with other ideas. That is called a recovery. That is also wow. called ridiculous. How many guys his size could run that far, jump that high, block a shot, and not commit a foul? Well, there's one of them sitting to my left. Not you. <laughs> He's dressed in red. <laughs> Mr. James. King yeah, James. Mr. Mr. LeBron about? James yep. can do it. But it, it is a smaller group. Yeah. Shot clock running down, and it'll be a violation. As LeBron James is here. Ajahn Rondo has come with him. We saw Ralph Sampson a little. Now, how's Rondo in the first row and LeBron's in the second row? The Hall of Famer Grant Hill is here. LeBron was in the first row. He got bumped back to the second row. Grant Hill was sitting next to his father, Calvin Hill, all pro in the NFL for a number of years. Ralph Sampson is here, another Hall of Famer. The best selling author, John Grisham, is here watching the game tonight. John Grisham looks exactly like Tennessee's Rick Barnes to me. That's pretty close. That's, That's Rick bad. Barnes. Yeah. <laughs> 12 on the shot clock the ball remains with Duke Barrett what defense 
Williamson lays it in. His R first points of the second half. R.J. Barrett just set a little back screen for Zion Williamson to try to free him up for a lob, and then the screener, who is often the man open, R.J. Barrett got the ball. Inbounds plays have been good to Duke tonight and this season. Remember the win, the reddish three you referenced earlier to beat Florida State a few weeks ago. Hunter pull up over Bolden. It's too tough of a shot. Bolden's right there. They got it back. Shot clock did not reset. Salt into the chest of Reddish. And we have a foul call. Timeout on the floor. Virginia desperately trying to make that big run to get right back into it. On ESPN. Now, game day will come from Memorial, but the game, of course, will be at Rupp. The NCAA Tournament Committee revealed its top 16 as of now. I don't think really any surprise among the four number one seeds. Duke, the overall number one in the eyes of the committee is, as of now. Tennessee, Virginia, Gonzaga rounding out the one seeds. If anybody's knocking on the door for a number one, though, it's Kentucky right now. It is Kentucky. And how about the play of P.J. Washington? He has been spectacular over the last month. And since Kentucky lost at Alabama, they've not lost since. They've won 10 in a row. Houston, a very good team that probably doesn't get the credit they deserve under Kelvin Sampson. Nevada, out of the Mountain West Conference, listed as a four seed. The two teams I thought should have been in the top 16 that weren't are Villanova and Washington. Now, Washington, playing in the Pac-12, does not get the kind of respect because the league is down. But Washington is a good team. Interesting game tonight. They're at Arizona State, 10 o'clock Eastern time tonight on ESPN. Jack Salt missed a couple of free throws, 52% on the season, and Virginia cannot afford to leave points anywhere right now, especially with Jones knocking down a jumper to get it back into double digits with just over three minutes to go. Everybody in black is knocking down perimeter shots in this game. All 11 for Jones coming in the second half. Runner will go for Ty Jerome. And Virginia continuing to attack, but on a few of their last five possessions. I thought Virginia settled for challenge jump shots. DeAndre Hunter a couple times. Kyle Guy has settled in the second half. I don't think they can afford to have empty possessions. Williamson and a hard foul by Salt to prevent the bucket. Zion Williamson has been somewhat quiet in this second half because he has been well defended. And Jack Saul just making sure that Williamson has to go to the free throw line in order to complete that. Williamson three for three tonight, 66% on the season. Remember, he struggled from the line in the first matchup, but Cameron went seven for 14 in that game. Salt out, Huff in. Maybe a little offense defense here with the five spot for Tony Bennett. One of two. Well, with a 10 point lead with 236 in regulation, it may be that Virginia is going to have to make Duke prove it from the foul line. Hops open for three, and he knocks it down. Boy, what a big shot. Great drive by Ty Jerome, just whipped it back over his head, and Huff was just sitting on that three-point line waiting for it. He doesn't shoot him often, but he shoots him well. Now nine for 16 on the season on three-pointers. And Duke going to use clock and then get into a set. And it'll start with Barrett. What a beautiful cut there. Step back three. Williamson above the crowd for the rebound, and they can run some more seconds off the clock. Boy, that's a big offensive rebound. That going to burn another 20 25 seconds reddish Williamson and Cam reddish with just a beautiful left-handed pass to Williamson that was right in front of LeBron he had a big old smile on his face after Zion dunked that in and now Virginia forced to foul a minute 24 to go and Cam Reddish making a really big play after Williamson got the offensive rebound. Well, after this offensive rebound, you can almost feel a little bit of air come out of Virginia. 
And speaking of air, that's where this guy operates. Gets up so quickly and so powerfully. And Virginia did a very good job on Zion Williamson all game long. And their defensive game plan excellent and executed well. It's just Duke shot the ball so well from three-point range. I don't know who anticipated that. Bolden misses the front end. Virginia needs to score, and they need to score quickly. A rejection by Bolden. Barrett is fouled. He was on his way to giving it to Williamson for what surely would have been another dunk. And you can see how much these two freshmen like each other. Tonight, after Washington and Arizona State, stay tuned for Sports Center with John Anderson and Kenny Main. They'll recap the Thunder and the Rockets. Big streaks for Westbrook and for Harden. What we learned from Virginia. Jay Billis will tell us what we learned from the Duke Virginia game tonight. A reaction from UFC 234 as well. Marquise Bolden just went out of the ball game. Take a seat on the bench. He has been a huge difference maker in the last month or so for this Duke team. His ability to switch off on a guard, to cover that guard for two, sometimes three dribbles, has really changed Duke's defense, which was already very, very good. And this is a hard team to deal with. He is an excellent shot blocker right at or near the top of the league in block shots. Guy knocks one down. Difficult shot. And it's a seven-point game with a minute two to go. Timeout, Virginia. Just an awful lot of ground to make up in a minute two seconds well the story of the game started off as and continues to be duke's three-point shooting and it started right out of the gate at first it was rj barrett who knocked down his first five zion williamson briefly getting in the act but it was barrett and cam reddish knocking down the most reddish from the corner Barrett giving it up to Reddish again in transition, spotting up at that three-point line, drawing two defenders, getting it to Reddish. Trey Jones getting into the act in the left corner. Heck, everybody but Marquise Bolden has hit one in this game. And we talked all year long about maybe a weakness, maybe an Achilles heel, maybe a place that you can get Duke is if you can make him prove it over the top. Well, they proved it in this one. 13 of 21, 62% from three-point range for Duke. And you know, they've only scored like 22, 24 point, uh, points in the paint, and they average like 45. So Virginia, that mission accomplished, keeping Duke out of the paint. But man, knocking down those shots at that rate has been incredibly impressive. A trap on Barrett and a foul. The most points Virginia had allowed in a game prior to tonight was 72 against Duke back at Cameron. So the, the two highest point totals that Tony Bennett's team has allowed this year have both come against the Blue Devils. You know, and it's not like Virginia hasn't scored enough points to be able to win this game or the one in Cameron Indoor Stadium. They scored 70 in Cameron, you know, 69 thus far in this game. That's enough for Virginia to win the way the C Cavaliers play. But just it's been extraordinary perimeter shooting that has given Duke what looks like it's going to be a win here in JPJ. Well, again, another loose ball. Duke comes up with it. If Virginia gets that loose ball, goes down and scores, it's got a whole different feel to it. I think Virginia is a little bit tired. And rightfully so. They've, this has been one hellacious basketball game on both ends of the floor. I mean, it's been physical. Everything has been contested. And both these teams are Final Four worthy and Final Four good. And how good is the ACC tournament going to be? North Carolina playing well. They've got Virginia on Monday. Yeah, how about the turnaround for Virginia? 48 hours away from a date in Chapel Hill. Yeah, it's basically all the best teams in the league. They have really difficult schedules. You know, Duke, by the metrics, may have the toughest in February, but Louisville's schedule is brutal. Virginia's not easy. Hunter misses the three and down to Duke again. If the Blue Devils win this game, there's a turnover. 
And it's knocked out of bounds. Still Virginia ball. If Duke wins this game, and it certainly looks like they're going to, is this their most impressive performance of the season? Well, the one against Kentucky was pretty darn impressive. That's true. That, that was that was out of the gate. They're going to have a hard time matching it. But this is a more difficult atmosphere. Right. Is this their most significant win? Yes. I think, yeah. So. Yeah. I think so. I think so. And to, to come in here against a team as good as Virginia and playing as well as Virginia has been playing. I mean, this, this is a great program that Tony Bennett has built here at Virginia. Uh, I don't, what have they lost? They've lost two games in the ACC in the past two years right. coming into this one. If it continues to go this way, this will be just the third out of, like, what, the last 30? That's remarkable. Right. That yeah. doesn't happen. Yep. Uh, for, so for Duke to come in here and shoot the ball the way they have, well, uh, really remarkable. Middle of the conference, big day for Florida State, beating Louisville in overtime. Big day for Clemson, beating Virginia Tech. Huge win for the Tigers. The remaining schedule for Virginia that Jay was talking about at North Carolina. You can see the Hoos again Monday night here on ESPN. And they still have to go to Virginia Tech. They still have to go to Louisville. They still have to go to Syracuse. They've got some very tough games coming. Well, it's a gauntlet in February in the Atlantic Coast Conference, as it is in most leagues. But I think you're talking about the ACC as the best league in the country, and certainly at the top. The most championship contenders are in this league. And that was a review to determine off whom the ball went out of bounds. It was off Guy. It is Duke ball with 39.2 to go. Listen to you with your fancy grammar. Off I've been, whom I've been the ball went. I've been sitting beside you for a few years now, you know. Outstanding. Thank you. Mr. Jefferson would be proud. I was nervous when I was doing it, by the way. I could feel you getting ready to critique. <laughs> <laughs> getting out my red pen. Yeah, just stay out of my cylinder. <laughs> and back to the free throw line again for the Blue Devils. The freshmen have scored all but seven of the Duke points in this game. And some long faces on the Virginia bench. This will be a sweep, a regular season sweep for the Blue Devils over the Cavs, who, of course, could easily meet again either in Charlotte or deep in the NCAA tournament the one thing or among the things you have to do in the ACC after this titanic struggle of a game is you've got to be able to move on win or lose there is another game coming Tuesday night Duke is playing at Louisville Monday night Virginia playing at North Carolina and how about the win North Carolina had today in overtime over Miami and Kobe White was absolutely spectacular with 33 points a lay-in by Jerome, but it's still an eight-point deficit. And Jack White forced to call a timeout. Duke couldn't get the ball in. Well, we showed you the remaining schedule for Virginia. How about the remaining schedule for Duke? They are now done with Virginia in the regular season. But, of course, you mentioned the game at Louisville. And we haven't seen Duke in North Carolina yet in the regular season. Both of those games are coming in the next few weeks. Well, Carolina is starting to really play well. Nasir Little is coming into his own as a player and attacking in transition, putting the ball on the deck. He's an excellent offensive rebounder. And I'm, I'm so impressed with the other freshman, Kobe White, and how good he is. And Luke May had a terrific game yep. today against Miami. That little pick and pop three he hit to send that thing into overtime was excellent. That undermanned Miami team, they've really only got seven players. Yeah. Chris likes a sensational. Yeah, and, and he was great today. Uh, they just don't have that many horses. They gave Carolina all they could handle. But it seems like every night when they're day or night when there's an ACC game or a series of games, uh, it is a uh, it is terrific theater. Well, these kids are having fun. That's a held game. ball. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's got the possession arrow from the looks of it. Barrett. And eventually the foul after about three, four seconds come off the clock. You know, as tough as the non-conference schedule was for Duke, and it was. They played Kentucky out of the gates. They went to Maui and so forth. To get into league play and to play true road games in hostile environments like this, and this goes for every program, not just Duke, that takes it to another level, especially for a team that features as many young players as the Blue Devils have. And it looks like, I mean, obviously they're uber-talented, but they are understanding what they're getting into, they are dealing with what they're getting into, and they... They're playing great on the road, right? These aren't your your usual freshmen. Yeah. I mean, the, these players are far beyond their years. And they, you know, R.J. Barrett's played a ton of international basketball. The spotlight forever has been on Zion Williamson. It does not bother him. And I have never 
in a Duke uniform seen a defender as smart and as savvy and as good as a freshman as Trey Jones. An impressive win here in Charlottesville for the Blue Devils as they go to 21 and 2, 9 and 1 in the league. Virginia suffers just its second defeat of the season, and both of them have come at the hands of the Blue Devils. The final at John Paul Jones Arena tonight, number two Duke, 81, number three Virginia, 71. The Blue Devils knock down 13 threes, six by R.J. Barrett, five by Cam Reddish, and that leads them to victory tonight, their sixth win against a top 15 team this season. Coming up next, UFC 234 for Jay Billis, Maria Taylor, and our outstanding crew. I'm Dan Schulman saying thanks for watching. And now let's send you to UFC 234 in Melbourne.